you are live. Woo, okay, well good morning everybody. It's Tuesday, no it's Wednesday, see I'm already losing the days. <laughs> My name is Silka and I'm going to take you through with just a mixed level regular yoga class this morning. I have to say it's a little weird that I'm not looking at people but I'm looking at Sue's phone on a tripod. Very cool. So let's get started. Oh, before we get going, just make sure that you honor your body where it's at in the present time and moment. And if something I offer doesn't work for you, just wait until something else comes along or just do what you know that your body is capable of doing. So if there's, if there's pain, don't do it. If there's discomfort, eh, that might be okay to go through. So let's get started. So I'm gonna start us laying on our backs. And if you have yoga blocks, then you can set up the yoga blocks like this, so parallel to each other on their mid-size section. And I'll show you, I'll show you both the yoga blocks. And if you don't have yoga blocks, you can roll up a blanket or even a beach towel at home. And you want it to be not a huge roll, but sort of the size that you see here. So let me show you what it's like on the blocks first. You're gonna wanna take the bottom block and you wanna rest right below your shoulder blades on it, and then Find a space to rest your head on the second block and open your arms out to the side. And then once you're somewhat comfortable here, see if you can extend your legs straight. So your, your bum is on the floor and you're getting a little lift and arch through the chest. Take a nice big breath in. Open your mouth and exhale with a sigh. And just allow yourself to melt into this block that's behind your back. And I'm gonna show you, if you're on the blocks, just stay there and breathe. If you don't have blocks, I will show you the blanket roll. So let me just walk the leg. So you wanna do the same thing with the blanket, is lay it so that you place it just right for ladies, where, right where your bra strap would be and drape your arms over the top of the roll. I think that's the important way of knowing that you're in the right position is that your arms are comfortably over the top of the roll. And this is a little bit more gentle than using the blocks. So again, once you're here, big breath in, big sigh out. And as you're laying here, following your breath in and out, Start to do a little check-in with your body, noticing how things are feeling. I'm just gonna sit up while I talk to you. And the purpose of this is to open up the front of the chest and the shoulders, because we tend to shorten and round forward in our daily lives. So this is a little counteracting to that, and it might help to open up the lungs and allow you to breathe a little bit deeper. So checking in with the body. See if you can start to deepen your inhalation and lengthen your exhalation. As you're inhaling, you're feeling that block or the blanket pressing into the back. And as you exhale, see if you can soften and melt over that roll. So starting to relax and soften the muscles a little bit more. Take about two or three more nice long breaths here. And then after your next exhalation, just slowly bend your knees, slide your heels up towards your hips a little bit. And then reach your arms overhead and we'll do just a few little angel wing arms. So just sweep your arms overhead and back down. Think of it as juicing the last little bit out of this stretch. And exhale, good. And 
Now just gently roll over onto your side and just push yourself up enough that you can slide your blanket or your blocks out of the way. Go ahead and set them off to the side and then come back onto your back. Keep your knees bent, walk your feet in so they're hip width apart. And just take a few breaths here, resting without anything underneath your shoulders. Just noticing how things are feeling. And then go ahead and draw your right knee in. If you'd like, you can extend your left leg straight. Maybe circle a few times with the leg around the hip socket. squeeze, squeeze the leg off to the side of your body. Good. And then switching sides. Hug the left leg in. Maybe extend your right leg straight. Do a few tiny little circles. And then hug your right leg in as well. Hugging both knees in. Circle the knees around. Massaging your back. Make sure you circle in both directions. Good. And then release your knees. Let the soles of your feet face the ceiling, coming into our happy baby. So maybe grab the outside edges of your feet. If you can't quite get there, wrap the arms behind your knees and rock gently side to side. And then coming back to center, see if you can draw the knees a little bit closer to the floor. And then release your feet to the outside edges of your mat. So now your feet are wider than your hips. Reach your arms overhead. Nice big breath in. And as you exhale, drop the knees to the right. Grab a hold of your left wrist and lengthen through that left side body. You can lift up your left hip a little. Send your left knee towards the base of your mat, the foot of your mat. And then coming back up with the knees. Switching the hands. Grab your right wrist. Drop the knees over towards the left, so your feet are still on the floor on the outside edges of your mat. Lift up through your hip, just lengthen through the right side body. Good, and then release, bring your legs back up, walk your feet back in, and let's take your hands and interlace them behind your right hamstring, and then see if you can extend your leg straight. And just do a few times, bending your knee, extending your leg. Bending, extending. Good. Kind of check in with the hamstring. And then if you'd like, extend your left leg straight. Flex through that right leg, so big, big stretch. And then take your right hand and just grab a hold of your right leg and let your leg open out to the side. Some of you might be able to grab a hold of your big toe with your index finger and your middle finger, your peace fingers opening out to the side. Now these can also be done with a strap, but since I didn't tell you to get a strap, we're going to talk through it without the strap. And bring your leg back up to center. Now I like to place my right hand on the outside of my right hip. Take your left hand, place it on your calf, and just kind of externally rotate your right thigh as you gently draw your right calf more towards your left shoulder. So feel that right on the outside of the right leg. Nice. And coming back to center, slide your left heel in and allow your right ankle to cross over your left leg. So coming into our figure four stretch, lift up your left foot, maybe interlace your hands behind your left knee, send that right knee away from your body with a little flex to the right foot. Again, maybe rock a little bit side to side. Ooh, feeling good. And then coming back to center, see if you can draw your left leg a little bit closer to your left shoulder. I'm feeling a nice stretch on the outside of my right hip. Good. And you can let your left heel just dangle down by your left hip. Nice. And then release your left foot to the floor. Let your thighs slide together so there's no space between them. Open your arms out to the side and drop the knees to the left. Maybe turn your head to the right, finding a full twist to the spine. And take a breath or two here. And then 
Turn your gaze back up to the ceiling and let your legs come back up. Go ahead and uncross the legs. And now interlace your hands behind your left hamstring. And just take a few moments to straighten and bend your knee. And then once that leg is straight, extend your right leg forward. Maybe draw the leg in a little closer. If you want to slide your hands up to your calf, or maybe you can even grab the big toe again and draw your whole leg in towards your body. Ooh. I'm gonna stay right here. And then release the stretch just a little bit and we'll open the left leg out to the left, finding that inner thigh stretch. Try to keep your right hip really heavy, extending through that right heel. external rotation of the left thigh and then see if you can bring your left leg across your midline and start to draw the left foot up towards your right shoulder. Ooh. As most of you who do my class know, this is the most uncomfortable stretch. Mm -hmm. All right, release, slide your right heel up and let your left ankle cross over your right knee. Finding our figure four stretch. When you're ready, lift your right foot up, interlace the hands behind the right knee. Keep sending that left leg away from your body. If it feels good, a few rocks side to side. And then draw your right knee in towards your right shoulder. Let that right heel relax. Make sure that you don't let your left foot sickle in. So you wanna keep a little flex to that left foot. And then release your right foot to the floor. Let your thighs slide together. Open your arms out and drop your legs to the right. Possibly turn your head to the left. And then bring your gaze back to center. Let your legs come back up uncross the legs and then just tuck your hands behind your knees gently balance your heels towards your hips and then you can lift your head up and start to rock forwards and backwards a few times and we're going to make our way all the way up onto all fours so you can either rock your way up and then come forward onto all fours or if rocking is not going to work for you roll over to your side and push yourself all the way up all right so that coming onto all fours making sure the knees are hip width apart wrists can be slightly ahead of your shoulders let's just do a few cat cows letting your belly sink towards the floor stretch the belly and then as you exhale round into a cat so take your time moving at your own breathing rate Adding any other little movements that your body might be calling for, whether it's more undulating or circular. After your next cat stretch, make your way back into a neutral spine. And let's take your left toes and press them back into the mat. You might have to adjust. You want to have your toes be on the sticky mat so you can really plant the toes and get a good stretch to the calf. And then keeping the back of your neck long, so keep your gaze fixed at the floor. Engage your belly muscles a little bit. Maybe even lift that right knee off the floor an inch or two. Hoorah. And then set your right knee back down. Now let your left toes lift up. You're only going to lift your leg as high as your hip, keeping the big toe pointing straight down at the floor. And then extend your opposite arm forward. And then just roll out the wrist and the ankle a few times. Check it out. Good. And then come back to a little bit more of a pointer, pointer with your finger. And then from here, bend your right elbow, place it behind your head, 
and your back leg can stay up, or if you need to, you can set your toes down. But we're just gonna turn and do a little bit of a twist with the right elbow towards the left elbow. Two, three, four, good, and five. And on the back, extend the back out and set down your hands, set down your knee. Shake up that left first for a second. Do any other little shakeouts that you might be needing. And when you're ready, we'll take your right toes and stretch them back into the mat. Get a nice little stretch to the calf. Again, gazing at the floor, engage your belly muscles. Think of knitting your ribs and drawing the belly button to the spine and see if you can float that left knee just an inch or two. Hover, hover, hover. And then set your knee back down. Let your right toes come up. And then extend your opposite arm forward. And again, just roll out the wrist, roll out the ankle, shake, shake, shake. And then extend with your palm facing your midline. Find that balance. This is a great exercise for your core. And then bend your left elbow, place the hand behind the head, and see if you can crunch elbow to elbow. Back up. Again, remember if you need to, you can set your back foot down. Three, two more, four, and five. Good, Mwah. extend it back out, <laughs> and set down your hands, set down your knee, shake up that right wrist a little bit. Good, all right, so from here, we're gonna come into our puppy dog stretch. Keep your hips high over your knees, and walk your hands forward. So like a puppy, you're gonna wag your tail a little bit, just stretch the chest towards the floor, Maybe you could look forward. Think of hugging your shoulder blades onto your back. So it's a nice stretch to the back, the upper back, the shoulders. And then lower your forearms to the floor and slide forward into our Sphinx pose. So move your elbows or your forearms slightly forward. Take a second to roll the thighs in towards each other and maybe keep the tops of the feet into the mat. Spread your fingers wide, lift your heart, and then drag the elbows back towards your waist so you get a nice stretch to the belly. This is our Sphinx pose. forehead onto your stacked palms. Allow your knees to bend and gently just swish your legs from side to side. If you need to roll your ankles around a little bit, you can do that too. And then let your left foot come back to the floor. So extend your left leg. Keep your left forearm across the front of your mat and reach around with your right hand, finding your right foot. Drawing that right heel in towards your hip, coming into our first little quad stretch. And you can stay really low with your torso, or if you want a little bit more sensation, just bring your left elbow under your left shoulder a little bit more and lift up a little higher. You can also sneak your fingers around to the inside of your foot and draw the foot a little bit more towards the floor. Finding your breath, softening into the exhalation. Picture that your quads are lengthening and softening. I like to spend a little bit more time on the quad stretches because it's so important to stretch the quads. That's going to help with your hamstring flexibility, it's gonna help with maybe knee pain. And then gently release your right foot. Maybe lower yourself on the way back down, roll that right thigh in, and bend your left leg. Then you're gonna reach around with your left hand, find your left foot or your left ankle, and 
start to draw the heel in towards your hip. Maybe you come up a little bit higher. Just noticing how that feels. Maybe you walk your fingers around so you grab the inside of your foot, the arch side of your foot. gently release your left foot. Good. If you'd like, just lower yourself down one more time. Rest your forehead on your hands. Let your knees bend. And windshield wiper the legs a little bit from side to side. So that'll be a little relief for your lower back. And then let your feet come back to the floor. So take another moment to roll those thighs in towards each other. Pressing the tops of the feet into the floor. And let's open your arms out wide into a big Y. And come on up onto the fingertips. And then you're going to press your pubic bone into the floor. And as you inhale, just circle up. And circle back down. So we're doing like a little undulating cobra pose. Good. And then after about three circles on one way, go ahead and circle up on the other side. Down. Now slide your hands down so you can move down along the axis of your Y. You still want to be wide off of your mat. Still up on the fingertips and we'll circle up again. Making sure all the while that you're keeping your toes on the floor and you're keeping your pubic bone pressing into the floor or the mat. Good. Circling up the other way. Good. So cobra pose in Sanskrit is Bhujangasana. So I always like to picture a cobra kind of snaking its way out of the basket. And come on back down. Now take your hands and bring them right underneath your shoulders, keeping the elbows close to your side. Again, reset, roll the thighs, tuck the tailbone. Inhale up for your cobra. Now that cobra is coming right out of the basket. <laughs> Two more. Inhale up. Exhale down. And last one, inhale up, exhale down, nice. Press yourself up to all fours, maybe curl your toes so you get a nice stretch to your feet. Might sometimes cramp in cobra, so this is a nice stretch for them. And then let your forehead come down, let yourself round into a child's pose. Inhale, come back up to all fours. If you need to scooch forward on your mat a little bit, you can. Walk your fingers slightly forward and turn your index fingers so they point up towards those corners of your mat. And we'll get ready to come up into a downward facing dog. So again, curl your toes, press into the mat, lift up your knees, and stretch back to downward dog. So easing your way into your dog, pedaling your heels. If you want to exaggerate the twist, you can do that. Keep moving with the breath and think of lengthening and softening into the exhalation. Slowly working your way into stillness with the feet. Exhaling, pressing the heels a little closer to the floor. Your gaze should be right at your knees. Belly muscles are strong. And move your toes a little closer to each other. Sweep that right leg up and back, keeping your hips level so you're not lifting the leg all that high. Big breath in, and as you exhale, draw your knee underneath you, coming slightly forward, knee towards nose. Inhale, stretch it back. Exhale, crunch knee to nose. Inhale, stretch it back. Exhale, knee to nose. And then last time, inhale, stretch it back. 
exhale through the nose, hold that crunch, and then look forward and see if you can step your foot forward. Whew. <laughs> and drop your back knee down. Good. So try to have your right knee over your right ankle. Big angle on the back thigh. Once you feel steady here, maybe bring your right hand up onto your right leg, straighten your torso up, Whoop. adjust your hair. I'm getting warm, I hope you are too. <laughs> and then take your left arm and stretch it up. So again, we're lengthening through that whole left side body, the left quad and the left hip flexor are getting a good stretch. And then let your left arm bend. Grab a hold of the left elbow with your right hand. And sink into this big swing stretch. both arms up and as you exhale let your hands come to the mat scoot your back knee back about an inch or two and then straighten your front leg and you can always use blocks here if you need to use blocks I'm going to just demo it without blocks in case you don't have blocks at home okay. and here I'm lifting my right toes flexing my right foot just drawing your whole right leg back towards your hip Strong hamstring stretch. And slowly set your right foot back down. Set your foot down at a slight angle so you're opening the foot out. Bring your left hand to the floor and then lift your right, your left knee up as you sweep the right arm up. So opening up into our lunge with a twist. Good. Keep lifting up through your back thigh. Maybe your gaze looks up at the ceiling. And as you exhale, bring your right hand to the inside of your right foot and drop your back knee back down. Good, now you can keep your right foot angled out to the side a little bit. I'm gonna add one more quad stretch, keeping your left hand down, reach your right hand to your right leg, and let your left toes lift up. And you might stay right here. Or you might extend that right arm back and see if you can make that hand to foot connection. And then possibly, ooh, Pull your heel a little bit closer to your hip, a little bit more intense quad stretch. And then gently release your back foot, don't let it hit the ground, and let your right hand come back to the mat. Curl the back toes, lift the back knee, and then step your front foot back. And we're stepping back to downward facing dog. Good. Take a moment to pedal the heels, start to walk the toes a little closer to each other. And when you're ready, sweep that left leg up, finding our three-legged dog. Nice big inhale, press the hands forward. As you exhale, round the back, draw the knee to the nose. Inhale forward, exhale crest. Inhale, extend, exhale, crunch. Now hold this last crunch tight, 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 and then look right between your hands and see if you can set that foot down. And if it doesn't quite make it, scooch it forward. <laughs> Drop your back knee down. And of course, you'll notice that each side of your body is different, so try to notice it without judgment. Okay. Knees over ankle, big angle on the back thigh, Bring your left hand up onto your left leg and sweep that right arm up. Whew. So as you're sweeping your right arm up, you might be slightly moving your back hip over your back knee. And then allow your right elbow to bend. Grab a hold of it with your left hand and draw that whole upper arm back a little bit more. the arms up. As you exhale, hands find the floor. Slide your back knee back an inch or so and straighten your front leg, lifting up the toes. Draw that whole leg back towards your hip. Maybe wave your foot or your whole leg from side to side.
in slowly. Let your left foot come back to the floor. As you set your foot down, set it down at a slight angle. You might have to scoot your back knee forward. And then with your right hand down on the floor, lift your right knee up and open that left arm up. So you're opening your heart up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, bring your left hand to the inside of your left foot. Drop your back knee back down. And then we're gonna bring your left hand up onto your left leg. Lift up your right foot. Find the quad stretch. You can stay right here or reach around. Try to make that hand to foot connection. gently release your back foot. Again, try not to let it hit the ground. That would hurt. Bring both hands to the floor. Lift up your back knee and step your front foot back. Back to our downward facing dog. Maybe pedaling out the heels a few times. If you need to reset your hands, just bring your knees to the floor. Reset and lift back up. And then from here, we're going to come into a three-legged dog. So bring your toes together again. Sweep your right leg up, open the hip to the right. Let your knee bend. Think of setting the right knee up towards the ceiling. Try to keep your shoulders level. Take a breath or two here. Some of you might be familiar with flipping your dog and if that is something you'd like to do, go for it. I'm not gonna demo that today. And then slowly bring your way back. Set your right foot down. Let's take a little tiny breather here in child's pose. And remember, you can always come to child's pose when you need to. So if you want to rest your hands, bring them down by your feet. Let your shoulders round. Let your back round. If you need to roll out the rest, think of child's pose as your reset button. If you need a little reset at any point, come to child's pose. to downward facing dog. So walk the fingers out, curl the toes, lift up and stretch it back to dog. Good. Toes are close together. Sweep that left leg up, open up through the hip, lifting the left knee up towards the ceiling. So you're flexing the left foot. Get a big stretch through the left side body. Try to keep those shoulders level. your dog if you would like to. And flipping it back if you flipped. <laughs> and slowly set your left foot back down. Good. Take one more breath here in your dog. Start to bend your knees. Get a little spring into your knees. Look forward at your hands and we're either going to step or float your feet to the outside of your hands. Bend your knees and float. We'll float you here. A step. Maybe be a little bit more gentle if you just walk your feet up. But so the feet are to the outside of the hands. Drop your hips down and lift your hands up and place them in front of your heart. <sighs> Take a few breaths. This is Malasana. This is a deep squat. Maybe sway a little bit side to side. Try to straighten your torso up as much as possible. Let's say at this point in class, usually you want fans on. It's definitely getting warm in here. So I hope you're building as much heat as I'm building. And go ahead and let your hands come back to the floor. We'll go up onto the balls of your feet and start to send your hips up towards the ceiling. As your legs straighten, you can move your feet in so they're a comfortable distance apart. And then keeping the knees soft, just let yourself hang. Maybe clasping your opposite elbow with your hands. Gently swaying side to side. And then release 
release your arms and just slowly, slowly walk your hands up. Great. And here we are in a standing position. If you need to adjust your outfit at all, go ahead. Adjust your hair. Getting kind of crazy. All right, we're gonna do a little bit more flowing and do some more standing poses, which may be a little bit more challenging. So, starting with your feet about hip width apart. Let's just bend your knees a little bit. Inhale, sweep the arms up. As you exhale, bend your knees, clasp your hands behind you. Inhale, lift the heart. And as you exhale, let your arms come forward into a chair. Okay, we're gonna do that about three times. Inhale up. Exhale, hands clasp behind you. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, sit back in the chair. Okay, let's do that again. Inhale up. Exhale, hands clasp. So a little bend to the knees. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, into chair. Good. Let's stay here in our chair for just a few breaths. Sending your weight more into your heels, lifting your toes slightly. Belly muscles are engaged. Ooh, feeling the quads work there a little bit. And then inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Take a breath. And now come on towards the front of your mat if you aren't there already. And you can have your feet either be hip width apart or have your big toes close together and have a tiny space by your heels. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, fingers can come to your shins, come halfway up. Exhale, step your left foot back. Keep your right leg bent. Maybe check your alignment. You, you definitely want a little space between your feet. So heel to heel might be good. Press strongly through that back foot. Press strongly down through the front leg. And then inhale your way up into a warrior one. So with warrior one, you're going to try and keep both hips facing straight forward as much as you can. Let's inhale, straighten the leg a little bit. Exhale, bend your right knee and bend your elbows and look up. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. And again, inhale, reach straight. Exhale. I call these dragon arms. So think of big dragon wings opening up. And then keep your knee bent as you inhale, stretch up. As you exhale, lean forward, sweep the hands behind you, clasping your hands, and they come into a humble warrior. So arms stretch up, crown of the head reaches towards the floor. Keep your balance. Keep your gaze fixed. And then as you inhale, come all the way back up, bring the arms up. As you exhale, we're going to open up to a warrior two. I'm going to turn around so that I'm facing the camera. So from warrior one, you're going to open up to warrior two. And you might want to widen your stance a little bit. So send your legs a little further apart. Check your alignment. Heel, front heel to back arch. Arms are straight and powerful. And gaze forward. Another thing you to look for is see, make sure you can see your big toe. So you want to track your knee more towards the pinky toe. That's going to help to engage those outer thigh muscles, the outer hip muscles. <sighs> Back leg is still strong. And then turn your right palm up. Sweep that arm up and back. Coming into our peaceful warrior or reverse warrior. back to warrior two. Bend your right elbow, place it on your right thigh, and extend that left arm overhead. This is our extended side angle. So really think of making a straight line from the tips of your fingers down through the outside edge of your foot. I'm hoping I'm a straight line. I don't know. Well, and then inhale, come on back up. Now we're gonna come into a balancing warrior one. So maybe bring your left foot in a little bit. Sweep your left arm underneath, spinning up onto the ball of your back foot. This is where it's important to find something to gaze at, find a focal spot, and then 
sink down into your balancing warrior. more breath. You can see I'm shaking here. It's hard. <laughs> and then as you exhale, bring your hands in front of your heart. Start to lean forward, shifting the weight to your right leg and see if you can take flight and come into a warrior three. Ooh. Nice. So hands can stay here in front of your heart and come out for a second. If you want a little bit more challenge, you can extend your arms back behind you, airplane arms, or you can reach your arms overhead in a full warrior three. Come back to my warrior two here. And now go ahead and let your hands find the floor. Stretch that left leg up towards the ceiling, crown of the head reaches towards the floor, standing split. Option here is to move one hand to your standing leg ankle. Crazy options to use both hands there around your standing leg. Go for it. <laughs> And then bring both hands back onto the floor and then let your top leg come to the pinky toe side of your standing leg. So you're coming into a little X step. This is that IT band stretch or that just the uncomfortable stretch around the IT band. And if you want to just walk your hands around first to one side and then to the other. Ooh. If you have blocks, this is always an option to use the blocks here, placing the, your hands on blocks. And then uncross your legs, bend your knees, and inhale, come all the way back up. And exhale, hands come to heart center. All right, well done. Take a second, towel off. Let's do the other leg. So we are going to step back with your right leg. So starting with the front of your mat, and then turn around the other. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, come halfway up, extend the spine. Exhale, let your hands come down, step that right foot back, plant the back foot at a slight angle, check your alignment, heel to heel, turn that right hip towards the floor, and then inhale up into your warrior one. So again here, you really want to try and turn that back hip forward as much as possible. And as you inhale, you're going to straighten your leg a little. Exhale into our dragon arms, looking up. Inhale, straighten. Exhale. Dragon, straighten. back up, keeping your leg bent, and as you exhale, lean forward, sweeping the arms behind you, clasping your hands, and then extending the arms up towards the ceiling as the crown of the head stretches towards the floor. A fixed gaze will go a long way in keeping you balanced here. Slowly as you inhale, come all the way back up and bring your arms all the way up and circle them around, opening up into your warrior two. So maybe adjusting your stance, making it slightly wider. Bending into your left leg. Good. Making sure that knee tracks more towards the pinky toe. Nice and strong through both legs. Try to keep your torso right in between your body. Good. Gazing forward. Sweep that arm up and back, come into our peaceful warrior. Your back hand can rest on your leg or you can place it on your lower back. Just lengthening, lengthening and extending through the left side body. Good, and then coming back to warrior two, bend your left elbow, place it on your left thigh and extend the right arm overhead. Nice big long stretch.
sweep your right arm underneath. Just pivot up onto the ball of your right foot. You might have to move your foot back a little bit or in a little bit. Good. So find that balance. Find that balancing warrior or crescent lunge. Think of maybe tucking the tailbone under and then straightening the back leg. Nice and strong and balanced. Relax the shoulders. Good. One more breath. And transition into our warrior three, bring your hands together in front of your heart, lean forward, shift your weight into your front leg, and then see if you can take flight. Oh, and one side might fly a little bit easier than the other. Keeping that back toe pointing straight at the floor, try to keep your hips level. And arms if you would like. Ooh. Watch overhead as an option. And let your hands find the floor. Whew. Let your right toes stretch up towards the ceiling. Crown of the head reaches towards the floor. Good. Ooh, my standing leg's working hard here. Remember, you can add any balance that you want by removing one hand and placing it on your standing leg ankle. Try to reach those toes straight up to the ceiling. And then let your right foot come to the pinky toe side of your left foot. Maybe walk your hands in, find that X step. <sighs> and possibly walk your hands off to the side. Juicing an extra little stretch out of this. Walk your hands to the other side. Ooh. back to center and then uncross your legs bring the big toes close together bend your knees and let your arms come up and come all the way up and step your feet step bring your hands together in front of your heart and then shake it out for a second good work that was a challenging standing sequence so we've got one more set of standing poses and then we're going to make our way down onto the mat so from here we're gonna step your right foot back and just turn your toes forward. So we're coming into our wide-legged forward fold, Pasarita Padottonasana. Make sure that you light at the outside edges of your foot with that short edge of your mat. Usually that means moving your heels slightly out to the side. You can place your hand on your hips. As you inhale, think of lifting up through your heart. And as you exhale, hinge forward. Once your body is parallel to the floor, you can let your hands come down and then maybe walk your hands back. Allow the crown of your head to stretch towards the floor. Slowly walk your hands back until they're underneath your shoulders. Come on up onto your fingertips, look forward, and then we're just slowly going to go from side to side here. Good. You can go down as low as your knees will allow you to, or stay up as high as you need to. Just go a few times to each side so you get a nice little inner thigh stretch. And then come on back to center. Engage the belly muscles. Bring your hands to your hips and bring yourself all the way back up. Good. And then turn your right toes towards the front of your mat or the foot of your mat. Pick up your left heel, turn it slightly out, and you want both legs straight. We're going to come up into our triangle pose. Arms reach out to the side and then reach forward and let your hands come down. I hear a block would be handy. If you don't have, happen to have one handy, worst case scenario, you can place your hand on your leg. Extend that top arm up, maybe turn your gaze up. Don't have to though, straight out to the side or even down at the floor. Good. This is Trikonasana triangle. Good. 
transition this into a balancing pose. Bring your top hand onto your hip. Soften into that front leg. Turn your gaze to the floor. And then I am going to use a block for this one because it is nice to have a little bit more height. I'm going to bring my hand off to the pinky toe side, shift my weight into my right leg, and then lift up my left leg. So sending energy strongly out through that back heel. Good. Opening my shoulder, my left shoulder up towards the ceiling. Maybe my hand. Now if you want an added challenge, we can bend your top leg and see if you can find that hand to foot connection. Ooh, this could be hard. This one is Ardha Chopasana. Getting that lovely quad stretch again. Bend your front leg again. Let that back foot find the floor. Ooh, find your balance and bring yourself all the way back up. Turn your feet forward and take a big breath in. Exhale. Oh, good job. Let's come into one more forward fold. Another option for the arms. Bring your arms out as you inhale. As you exhale, clasp your hands behind you. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, hinge forward and then see if you can allow the crown of your head to stretch to the floor and your knuckles to stretch to the ceiling. Slowly release. Let your hands come back down underneath your shoulders, being on the fingertips. Look slightly forward, and then once again, go from side to side. So as you're doing the side to side, if you want to grab your block and preemptively bring it over there towards the other side of your mat, do that. Good. Remember, flow in any way that makes you feel good. And then come back to center. Engage those belly muscles, hands to hips. Bring yourself all the way back up. Good job. And we'll do triangle to the other side. So turn your left foot towards the front of the mat. Pick up your right heel, turn it slightly out. Both legs are straight. Lift the arms up. And then reach for the front of the mat. Let your left hand come down either onto a block. I'll take my block here into the block, extend your top arm up, find a happy place for your gaze, down at the floor is the most stable, out to the side, or up at the ceiling. Good. Again, pinching between your shoulder blades, so you're opening that top shoulder. Bring your gaze to the floor. Let your top hand come onto your hip. Bend into that left leg. Move your block forward. You can come up onto your fingertips, so wherever you want the block. But you want to have the block off to the pinky toe side. Shift your weight into your left leg and your left fingertips. And then take flight. Oh, maybe. <laughs> take flight with the right leg. So you're, I'm flexing strongly through my right heel. That's going to help with my balance and maybe bring that right leg slightly forward will help with the balance. And then you can extend the top arm up. Ooh. If you want to try the Ardha Chapasana, bend your top leg. See if you can make the hand to foot connection. It really helps to keep your gaze fixed and open up and stretch. your back foot find the floor. Bring yourself all the way back up. Oh, turn your toes forward, hands to hips. Oh, good job. <laughs> nice big breath in. And one more time, fold forward. Letting your hands find the floor, maybe adjusting your feet a little wider. 
and then letting the crown of your head stretch towards the floor. Hands can walk back. Slowly bring your hands back until they're underneath your shoulders. We're going to come into fan pose. Let your left hand stay directly underneath your face. Try to keep your hips level and sweep that right arm out to the side. And then maybe twist and look up at the right arm or right hand. And switch sides. Right hand comes down, left arm sweeps up. Maybe twist and look up. It's really hard to keep your hips level, but do your best to try to get the twist out of the upper back. Good. And bring it back down. Nice. Now turn your heels in, toes out, bend your knees, and just bring your hands above your knees so the fingers are facing the floor. That's a pretty comfortable place here. Good. And let's drop your right shoulder, look over your left shoulder. To center, drop the left shoulder, look over the right shoulder. One more time to each side. And drop the left, look over the right. Good, come on back to center and just go ahead and lift up. Maybe adjust your stance. We're going to come to goddess pose. So you want your heels in, toes out. If you're really fortunate, you could have your toes point straight up to the sides, but wherever you are, try to make sure your knees are tracking over your toes. So everybody's goddess is gonna look different and that's okay, good. So come down into a little squat, kind of sway your way into your goddess. Good, and extend your arms out to the side, bend your elbows, join your index finger and your thumb. Great, and let's do a few little side bends. So try to bring your elbow towards your thigh, back up, get to the right, Whew. left, and right, good, one more time, and up, perfect, now extend your arms, extend your legs, five-pointed star, turn your feet forward, and then step your feet together, well done, okay, we're going to make our way down onto our mat, and I promise we won't have to get up again until after class. So face the front of your mat, toes come together, hands in front of your heart. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, come halfway up, extend the spine. Exhale, hands come down, step back to downward dog. Take a few breaths in dog. Your heels come a little closer to the floor than they did the first few dogs. They did a lot of work to open everything up, so hopefully that will show in your dog. And then slowly come on forward, draw your right knee behind your right wrist and set your right shin down. And then you're going to let your back leg slide back. So we're coming into our pigeon pose here. Try to keep both hips facing forward. You can straighten your back toes out or keep them curled under. Your fingertips, lifting your heart as you inhale. As you exhale, just fold forward. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold forward. One more time. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold forward. Nice. And now just go ahead and stack your hands in front and let your forehead rest on your hands. If that's a little bit too far away, you could stack your fists, make it a little bit higher, or you could even grab a block and place your forehead, forehead on the block. It's nice to rest your forehead on something that helps to allow your body to relax a little bit better. Maybe take a big breath in and sigh it out. Think of softening the belly muscles. Softening into that big hip stretch.
next exhalation, just slowly push your head up a little bit. And then as you come up, roll onto your right hip and draw your left leg up. So you want your left shin to line up along that long edge of your mat. And then take your right heel and bring it forward. So your right shin lines up parallel to the front, short edge of your mat. And your left leg is parallel to the back. So we're, we're going for all right angles here. So you're going to flex your foot. So we've got right angle, right angle, right angle. Da, da, da. So very nice. So from here, sit up nice and tall and walk your hands around towards your right. So if your right leg is forward, you're walking towards the right. Good. And now see if you can walk your hands forward and let your elbows come down, coming into Sphinx arms. Finding a really big twist through your spine. So we can stay right here. If you still have a little bit left in you and you want to twist just a little bit more, scooch your right elbow a little bit forward. Take your left hand underneath your right elbow and extend and twist your left ear towards the floor. It's a pretty intense twist. back to parallel. Pause for a moment and then lift up your elbows. Walk your hands back and then just sweep your left arm around and let your knees come up. I apologize for facing the wrong way. <laughs> just windshield wiper the legs a few times. And then when you're ready, coming back towards that front of your mat, bring your hands in front of you. Extend your left leg back and we're just going to lift up and step back into a downward facing dog. Good. One more breath. And then we're going to switch legs. So now take your left leg, bring it forward, set your left shin down, left knee's right behind your left wrist, scooch your right knee back, try to keep both hips facing forward. Coming up onto your fingertips, inhale, lift up, exhale, round forward, inhale, come on up, exhale, forward, one more time, inhale, up, exhale, forward, and then let your hands come to the, let your arms come to the floor, let your forehead rest somewhere. your breath and soften yourself into this stretch. This is our big pigeon stretch. It's another big stretch for the outside of the hip. See if you can relax your belly muscles. Relax the muscles of your face. And then you're going to walk your hands around to the left. I'm going to turn around so that I'm facing the camera. All right, so walk again. And then come on forward onto your forearms, finding your sphinx arms. And if you want to explore a little bit deeper, scoot your left elbow forward a little and slide your right arm underneath. And then turn your right ear towards the floor. another opportunity to compare your two sides without judgment. You just notice if one side was more resistant than the other. For me, definitely, 
And of course, you'll notice this is the side I'm talking more on because this is my least comfortable side. So I will try one more time. Bring my right ear towards the floor. <sighs> Slowly make your way back to your parallel arms. Lift up your elbows. Sweep that right arm back. Lift up your knees. And then just windshield wiper the legs a few times. So I'm just going to turn around so that I'm not, so that my back's not to y'all. Good. So it's a little massage across the sits bones here. Right. And then just go ahead and come into a cross legged position. Let's bring your right shin forward, so up nice and tall, and then twist and grab a hold of your right leg with your left hand, and then right arm up and reach up and over. And then slowly come on back up, face the front, walk your hands forward, Maybe scoot your hips back a little bit. Last little squeeze for the hips. And slowly walk your hands back. And then we're gonna switch up the crossing of your legs. So now bring your left leg forward. Turn slightly towards your left. Grab a hold of your left knee with your right hand. Bring it left arm up and squeeze it up and over. And then slowly bring it back up. Whew. Good, I'm trying to do lots of those side stretches. We spend a lot of time doing forward folds and back bends and don't spend quite as much time with the side stretches. So I like to really try to get some good side stretches into every class. All right, last little hip stretch. Walk your hands forward, scoot your hips back. Maybe let your head drop a little bit. stretch, chin to chest, belly button to spine, and then flip your palms forward, sweep the arms up, and exhale, bring your hands behind you. Good. Go ahead and uncross your legs, bring your feet forward, and then turn sideways again. We'll do one last little stretch for the chest and the biceps. We come up into our reverse tabletop. So fingers can be wherever they are comfortable for you. I like mine slightly out to the side so I can open up the chest. Heels walk in. And when you're ready, lift up, lift, lift, lift. Try to make yourself as flat of a table as possible. Your gaze can be up or it can stay straight forward, keeping your chin slightly tucked. Circle a few times around your feet and around your hands. Circle the other way. Come back to center, lift, lift, lift. No sagging tables here. And slowly lower down. Good, release your hands, stretch it out. And then we're slowly going to lower yourself down onto the floor and hug your knees into your chest. Whew. We are moments away from Shavasana, so hang in there. Release the lower back with a few circles. Switch directions. Good. And then come into a happy baby again. So soles of the feet face the ceiling. Legs are open wide. Maybe finding the outer edges of the feet this time. Couple more rocks side to side. And then release your feet and stretch yourself long on the floor. Reach the arms overhead, reach the toes towards the base of your mat. Take a big breath in. Point your toes, flex your fingers, hold that breath, feeling all that air and tension in your body. And then open your mouth and exhale with a big sigh. 
your arms come down to your sides, bend the shoulders a few times, let your legs just splay out to the side. <sighs> Shavasana, pose of the corpse, letting all your muscles go. <sighs> letting go of any control of the breath, letting go of control of the muscles allowing yourself to melt heavy, heavy into the mat. It's time to come out of Shavasana. I will bring my chimes three times. Inhalation deepen and your exhalation lengthen. As your awareness comes back into your body, slowly start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Maybe gently move your head from side to side. And then roll the wrists and the ankles. Letting those little movements turn into any bigger stretches that might feel good. In your own time, bending your knees and rolling over onto whichever side feels better. Just pausing there for a moment. And then use your hands to press yourself back up into a seated position. So finding whatever seat is comfortable for you, balancing evenly on the sitting bones, spine nice and tall. And let's take one big breath in together, sweeping the arms up. And as you exhale, bring the hands together in front of your heart, bowing down to your own heart. And the light inside of me acknowledges and greets the light inside each and every one of you. Namaste. Thank you all.